Hey folks and welcome to episode 43 of the Eva Christie Hamleting podcast. I'm your host Eva and I'm coming to you from my home in Perth in Scotland. It's Tuesday the 13th of June and the weather here, well it's it's cool and it's dry at least for now. The weather here has been horrific recently. We've had just downpour after downpour after downpour and it hasn't really felt like there's been much of a let up. There has been some flooding and according to my Facebook memories it was like this this time last year. So a bit of a nightmare. Um, not the best time to be darting back and forth to my friend's home. Um, a few miles away to be cat sitting. Um, but it's it's done. You do these things and that's all there is to it really, isn't there? Um, it would be nice though if we could get a little bit of, of sun now to kind of dry up some of the sort of boggy lands because it was quite quite a deluge of rain that we had over a short period there. So slightly off kilter there. Um, welcome, welcome if you're a returning viewer, welcome if you're a new viewer. I hope you enjoy what you're seeing today and enjoy the knits that I'm going to show you. I am the director of Perth Festival of Yarn but I also do some knitwear design and some yarn dyeing as Milted Mug Dye Works. And big bit of news to share with all you guys before we crack into all the nitty stuff um, today but tickets for Perth Festival of Yarn go on sale from 10 o'clock, that's 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday the 15th of July. So set your alarms, especially if you're after tickets to any of the classes. John, I was going to say Josh there for a minute, it's not Josh, Josh is my partner. John, John Glenn, who's Bearded Jill, who's been helping me a wee bit behind the scenes with looking after the website and sometimes the Instagram feed as well. He is back from his two week holiday, he is on it. So he's getting our website updated and everything ready to go. So I believe that the, the programme um, for classes should be live, should be live in the next day or so. And we're just waiting for some details back from Di Gilpin regarding what her keynote lecture is going to be on. So it's exciting times, really exciting times, really, really busy here at Perth Festival of Yarn headquarters. And I tell you what, I'll give you another big bit of news just before we, we totally jump in here. But... Tracy, um, my friend who owns Lagonfelt Studio in Grief, and I are going on a road trip on Friday the 23rd of June. We're going to Woolfest, folks! Woo! <laughs> not as vendors this time. We are not vending. If we get our t-shirts in time, we will have Perth Festival of Yarn t-shirts. <laughs> Fingers crossed they get that from the printers in time. Uh, but yeah, we're going for the day from Perth to uh, down to Cockermouth and back again. Now Google is telling me that it's only three hours in a car to get there. I think it might be a bit longer. <laughs> Last time I was in the Lake District it took a bit longer <laughs> to drive there. But we'll see. We're going to leave early. We're taking a picnic. We're getting a playlist sorted. Lots and lots of coffee. We'll be drunk. It's going to be epic. I, I cannot wait. I so cannot wait. So um, it's totally unexpected. It wasn't really planned. We thought we would be elsewhere actually promoting the festival on that day. It's not happening. We won't go into the unprofessionalism of some folk. Um, so we've just decided to kind of, well, yeah, we've, we've had a change of plans and this is going to be so much fun. So we are, we are really excited. Yeah. Right, nitty stuff, because that's what you've come for, not to see me being all totally crazy and all, and all excited and already getting high in the yarn fumes that aren't even in the room yet. So, rehomed yarns this time. Well, there's been some rehomed yarns. Um, I've been donated uh, a few little mini skeins by the lovely Desiree Ross of Abercane Yarns. They're going into my blanket and I'm not showing you my blanket today because it's something that I've been picking up and doing a bit of but I have quite a lot of knitting to show you and different yarns to showcase and I don't want to stretch the podcast out too long. So I will show those to you another day um, when there's a good sizable amount of squares again in that blanket to show you. 
So that's that, finished pieces. Well, first up I have a finished pair of socks. Well, they're finished apart from the fact that I haven't woven the ends in yet, but hey, that's not, that doesn't count, does it, really? So I have a sock that has a friend. So I had one of these done last time and this one wasn't far behind. This is Opal Sock Yarn. I can't remember the exact colourway because it was from Deep Stash. It was supposed to be uh, a Bactus. I ripped it out because it had been sitting... Um, sorry, I'm watching Simba. That's what that sound is, is his bell sort of jingling away as he's, he's grooming himself. He's giving himself a big wash there and it was just... <laughs> yeah, kept catching him outside of my eye. So yes, it's from the Rainforest range, I believe. I don't have the label anymore because it was back to under construction and it is no longer. If you don't like it, rip it out and start again and it's something that you really will enjoy. So here we go. Loving those colours. These feel like my spirit colours right now and I just love that pop of vibrant orange. This is my first time doing in an afterthought heel. I can understand why folk love it because a pair of socks just rattles and flies off the needles in no time. Um, so that was a bit of a revelation. The contrast that I used is Knit Global in Tropicana. All the details will be in the down bar. I should have said that in the intro and I totally didn't because I just got overexcited about the news I had to share with you. But all the details from everything I'm talking about today will be Amphibirth Festival of Yarn as well in the down bar here. So contrast heel, that's fun. And it is, it's just like, what alchemy is this? That's a toe. That is basically just a toe on the other side. <gasps> yeah, light bulb moment, that one. It's like, what alchemy is this? And it does actually fit my foot rather well. What I've realised is that I've been gifted a couple of pairs of socks and these seem to be Fish Lips Kiss heels and I love the socks. Um, I absolutely love the socks I have been gifted. But they don't fit my feet just quite so well, probably because I've not been knitting them and trying them on as a go. But yeah, these and a traditional slip stitch heel flap and gusset seem to fit my Celtic feet and calves really well. My concern at the moment is, and I am knitting another pair of afterthought heel socks at the moment, is I don't know how well this will wear because it doesn't have the reinforcement of that slip stitch. But I have worn my gifted slip sli gifted fish lips kiss heel socks in my Dot Martin boots a fair few times and they seem to be Pardon me. They seem to be holding up quite well, so I live in hope, but it's knitting, it's supposed to be enjoyed. Worst case scenario, cut it, pull the yarn out. The way the construction's been done, it's going to be easy enough to kind of rattle it back to pick up the stitches and chuck another heel in, um, rather than darning. Bring it on, I say, <laughs> bring, it, bring it on. I will take great delight in, in road testing those socks. That's my first finished item, uh, my finished piece. Soft Sunday by Sufi Simola is now off the needles. I did an I-cord bind off which was totally different from what the pattern called for which was a big stretch bind off and it's currently blocking. So you saw it just before um, that I-cord bind off and I'll show you it to you again once it's blocked. That brings me to what's in my needles. So I'll show you the project I've got going first, sock-wise. So this, and I'm wondering if anybody watching, thinking of one person in particular, might recognise this yarn. So this is a sock, this here is where my heel flap's gonna go in and I just kitchened off the toe before I started chatting with you today because I needed a coffee and I needed to refuel and I just needed a little bit of time out before I went and sat in front of the camera. 
that's all I've got left from the first 50 gram bowl because this comes in 50 gram bowls. This is Patton's Croy socks. I think it's is it the stripes range and the colourway is spring leaf stripes. So that's it says 2016-02 so I wonder if this was a sort of like a colourway or a range that was brought out in 2016. Certainly it was sent to me in 2016 in the most wonderful, beautiful, generous swap package from Carolyn of the Next Beautiful Thing podcast. Um, when we were chatting back and forth we were going to do, yeah I think I was sending her opal yarn because she couldn't get it very easily where she is and there's an abundance of it in the UK. Fantastic sock yarn, I love opal sock yarns. And she was asking if there was anything in particular I was looking for and I said well the UK podcasters that I watch tend to rave about Patton's Croy or Patton's Croy socks and you just cannot get it for love nor money here despite the fact that you can get Patton's or Patton's however you want to pronounce it yarn really easily here really easily I thought I'm probably wrong it was a UK yarn brand Maybe it's a global yarn brand with different sort of things in different places, but yeah, this is something that I really wanted to try. But Carolyn being who Carolyn is, I love her to bits, I truly do love Carolyn. Um, she she didn't just send me one, because uh, that would have been too easy. <laughs> what Carolyn did was, Carolyn went and sent me six balls of pants cross socks, so that's enough to make pairs. So this is the first pair under construction. Um, I'm really loving that bright zingy pop in there with the grey. It's fab. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes, how it wears. It definitely feels, I know it's written down as a four ply, but it felt a bit thicker while I was knitting it. It certainly feels more rustic. You can definitely feel that it's not super wash treated. It says it's washable, but it's not super wash. Um, I love it. I love it. I was knitting it and I think it was just the illusion of the stripes. I thought it's going to be a bit too wide for my foot, but it's not. It's not because I've had it on just to try and it's it's great. So, mm. Exciting. So I'll need to cast on the friend for that one now. And drum roll please, because you guys are going to be so proud of how much I've knit um, since I last spoke to you guys on the podcast. Now, I have got a lot of knitting done in this last fortnight. It's been a lot going down, guys. Um, I think the last podcast episode I spoke to you, I mentioned the bomb attacks in Manchester and how, how I was kind of feeling about that. Well, it doesn't get any better because, I think it's it, maybe a week ago now, just over a week ago there was another terrorist attack in London similar to what happened in the last London terrorist attack where a van mounted the pavement but it's not to take away from that it was worse than just a van mounting the pavement because my understanding of what's happened and I may be slightly wrong here based on news reports and such was that there were people in that van in the back who jumped out and then they were going into to restaurants and pubs and things and they were stabbing people and it's Holy Day of London went into knockdown and lockdown and it's just really quite scary. We just appear to be quite a big target at the moment and, and what do you do to stop people just jumping in a car or a van and mowing folk down? You know, there's really huge amount you can do. So it's been it's been scary times, but I had just been checking in with the news before going to bed and caught that breaking news as it happened, and that was it. I just I, I couldn't settle. We had my nephew staying over; he was already safely tucked in bed. Josh had gone up already. I was supposed to just be joining him. I stayed, you know, glued glued to that breaking news. We've had a general election in the UK as well, and. Politically, we're in even more turmoil than we were before it was called. I stayed up on election night um, longer again than I'd planned. I'd wanted to see my local vote come in and there were only 21 votes between the 
person who, who won, who was re-elected, and the person who had really been hoping to steal their seat. So that was dramatic, but because it was so close, the vote was recounted twice. So that was the next couple of hours I was up sitting, waiting for that, because it it was really important to me to kind of follow what was happening, because it's going to have such a massive impact, not just in Scotland, but in the whole of the UK, and you know, potentially globally as well. So all that to say, I have been glued to the television set quite a lot recently, and I have needed something to do with my hands because I just can't sit still. And we're widening out and public day happened as well, so that was that was also sitting about. So without further ado, this is all new and all I have to do to this is cast off now. So just to give you an idea of length, this cable at the bottom of my knitting is over a meter long. Um, I've joined two cables together so I'm not quite sure in the exact length but there's I think it's 401 stitches along that cable right now, four millimeter cable. And those are Minute Pro or Nitpick Symphonies, depending where you're buying them from. So this pattern, this is Geode by Clarissa Browning. It's a relatively newly released pattern on Ravelry. I saw it, I loved it. My version looks nothing like the prototype, which is using sort of like two colour wheel style cakes. One that goes shoot through shades, big shaded bands of really luscious jewel um, purple tones and then into dove greys. I was just feeling the need in these really dark times for a really bright, zingy, in your face crazy shawl. And I just thought, do you know what, I could I could do something with that. And use up stash. And this is what I came up with. But it would look that apart from the test knitters, if there were any, I was the first person to actually start knitting this pattern because I got 30 odd rows through the pattern, it's a pay for pattern, it's about £5 in the current exchange rate so wouldn't normally quibble but I got through to this section around about here and I was knitting and written back because the stitch count wasn't right, it wasn't right and then back and forth and back and forth and spent maybe an hour and a half going it, it's a brand new pattern, it must be me, what have I done wrong? Before I looked and I compared the charts to the written, I went, they don't me either, so maybe the chart's right. So I followed the chart and I thought, no, I'm, I'm not convinced with how it's sitting now. So I emailed the designer who, this was stupid o'clock in the morning because I thought I can't put this down because I won't be able to sleep properly because I'd be so frustrated about this. Um, I emailed the designer who came back and confirmed my fears that what she'd done was she had uploaded the PDF file that had not been tech edited. So I was right, it was wrong. And not only was it wrong at that point, it was going to be wrong at several points later on and certain rows are repeated in the way that it's written and it was just basically a bit of a shambles. I thought, well, that's that's fine, you know, she's just fessed up, we're human, we make mistakes. So I ripped back and I kind of carried on a few rows and then I looked at what I'd done and went, no. So there's been another mistake, not of my making, of the pattern, that she hasn't properly laid it to when she's put that message out, although she's updated the pattern now and she's corrected that as well, there was another it's another problem. So the only way really to fix it, because I hadn't put lifelines in, because I had done it right as far as it's aware, and I kind of finished that first pattern, I had to rip out essentially the full amount of that yellow section and cast on and start again. Was I, you know, I got a thank you, thank you very much for bringing this to my attention, because a lot of people have bought this pattern. Did I get, do you know what, for your inconvenience, because you actually pointed it out and there's umpteen mistakes. Do you know what, have, have your pattern, have your time back, because hours just to get this bit back. No. So, slightly miffed by that, I must admit. But, and as it's, it's left a wee bit of a bitter taste in my mouth, but I do like the pattern. And now it's corrected, I can see myself knitting it again, maybe all in one colour or such. It's got different panels, so it kind of goes from really kind of 
open lace into kind of twisted, almost twisted kind of cable bits into diamond panel lace into a ripple section you can see that, and then into a garter section and I did a fair amount of the garter section at Royal Wide Knit and Public Day I still managed to make a mistake I missed an increase row I had to take back two rows stitch by stitch yeah these things happen <laughs> you think you're safe with garter stitch and sometimes you're not so I'm going to run through the yarns that I've got and I'll just check my time check we're good, yeah I've got plenty of room so first up this gorgeous Winnie the Pooh type yellow. This is Ginger's hand dyed Swell You sock in the colour Honey Pot. It's 100 grams, 365 metres, in an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon colourway. Jess is the most amazing dyer. I love, I love what she's done here. It's fabulous. Their card's so cute. So that's my first section and I will put this up in my projects page for where I have changed the colours as well because of how much I've used in each one because I did way most of the yarn as I was going. I think I forgot for this sort of section until I was about halfway through. So the second panel up is variegated and I think it does actually work because Variegated yarns and lace can sometimes be funny, they can be better with texture. I do think because it's just a short sort of panel and it's in between two really vibrant colours, it works. But this one is Martin's Lab, which I got from Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year. This is Bouncy Merino, 100% Superwash Merino, 365 metres in Navajo. That was beautiful to work with. I loved it. I really loved it. And then sadly I didn't enjoy this section much and I do hope it's gonna block out really well. Love the colour. Not an issue with the colour. This is Roar Spats and Wool Miser. It's... which one's that one? I believe it's this one. It's pure. It's 100% wool. It's Merino Superwash and these are big 150 gram skeins. It's, it's in Nobody is Perfect in Fruling. So I believe Fruling must be the colourway. And when I weighed these, there's actually near enough bang on 170 grams. And they're 150 gram skeins. And that's really the reason that people love Roar Spats and Wool is that you get an awful lot of bang for your buck. I didn't realise that when I bought them at EYF. Um, not this year, previous year. It was the colours, it was the colours really that drew me, but what I really didn't like about this is I wound it off the skein onto my swift and on my ball and I always wind my ball twice just to loosen it up and not to put any sort of, sort of pressure on, on that yarn, make it too tight. I was knitting with this, the whole time I was knitting with it I didn't really enjoy it and it wasn't the pattern, it was the yarn because it felt like cotton didn't it feel like merino, it felt way too harsh it's not even like a super twist or anything I don't, I don't know what it was about it but not too chuffed and there just seems to be the, the odd bit where it's I didn't split the yarn but it doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to be sitting very well. A bit like the way cotton can be. It's it's really, really funny. So I'm hoping that blocking is really going to open that up and soften it up somewhat. So then we go from the lace and then we've got a couple of ripple repeats and then we go into this here. I love this. I think this variegated colour works really well between that bright lime green in this in your face orange and I don't have the label with me because I thought I was totally organised and I'm not no not with me it's upstairs so that's not going to happen just now 
Sorry, there was not really much point in putting it on hold for two seconds there. So I put my hot water bottle back on my back today. It's not a great pain day. Right. I can tell you what it is anyway. It's Ripples Crafts in Hubble Bubble and it's RS35. It's a 75% wool, 25% nylon and all their Hubble Bubble colourways are non-repeatable. I got Hubble Bubble at Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year but Helen is coming to Perth Festival of Yarn this year and Hubble Bubble is one of her main ranges. So it, it's fantastic value, it's like £13 for 100 gram skein. Really, really well, reasonably priced, especially for all those colours and it just, when I saw it, it's not my normal colour palette really to go for, but it was just reminded me of flowers like pansies and tulips and I think it works really well in that broad ripple section. And then that brings us to the garter section along the bottom here. And this is another Roar, Spat, um, Roar Spats and Wool Miser. It's also pure 100% wool and nobody's perfect. But it doesn't seem to have a colourway or anything else on the label to indicate what it is. And I tell you, chalk and cheese working with this because this, which I'm still attached to, does not feel like cotton. It feels more bouncy. It it kind of looks to have the same twist. So I really, really don't know what's going on um, about this. And I don't know why it's nobody is perfect. Is it because it was supposed to be a solid colourway and it isn't totally? It's it's you probably won't be able to see it from here, but it is a little bit tonal. This has been a delight to work with. I could work with that all day. I just Goodness knows, goodness knows folks. So all I have to do now, all I have to do, is an I-cord bind off of 401 stitches. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so I'm going to need something good on the TV while I'm working through that. That brings me up to I suppose that I've been watching reading. <laughs> So, watching Versailles, um, we're coming towards the end of season two of Versailles, which has been on BBC Two, and over the weekend I binge watched all of series five of Orange is the New Black. And then I got really excited, at the same time it's, it is a proper binge feeling because I'm feeling that loss, it's like why, why did I do that to myself? There's no more excitement to come, but there is because it's been set up perfectly for a series six and then I've got a friend who actually works for kind of like PR from all that company and stuff and he sent me a wee message to see there's going to be a series seven as well. <laughs> that was really exciting because it is, it's, it's probably the only show or series or whatever on Netflix or any other of these sort of subscription services that I sit down and I, I'm really really into. And I won't give away too much except to say that all 13 episodes in series 5 are based over a period of about three days um, during a riot in the prison. Yeah, spoilers. It's not fair to give spoilers especially in something like that. For reading, well I finished The Valley of Amazement by Amy Tan. I didn't have a huge amount left to go on this when I spoke to you last and I'm a big Amy Tan fan anyway. And this, this has been a chore. Walden, great, great, sorry, great American novel, um, I suppose an American classic. It's on the 1001 books you must read before you die. It's felt like an age reading this because it's been over a fortnight I've been reading this now. I think around about that time, end of June anyway. I'm really, really not enjoying this. I've got 16 pages left to go. It just feels really self-indulgent despite its size. But it's almost done and it's not one I'll read again. Um, and there are some points of, of 
beauty and really eloquent prose that have made me stop and kind of think and consider. But not one, not one for me, I'm afraid. Sorry. I haven't watched any new podcasts, so no new podcast love to give, but my love is always to to my Scottish clan um, or the other Scottish podcasters out there. And just finish off really with a thank you. So I briefly mentioned Worldwide Net and Public Day there. We met at the Perth Museum and Art Gallery. Staff there were very welcoming to us again for our second year in that venue. Thank you to everybody who came along. We probably had as many crocheters as we had knitters and we even had Louise from Unique Fibres come along with her e-spinner, which was fabulous. So lovely to see a bit of diversity in the, the fibre crafting going on that day. The courier came out to take photos. Somebody sent them a press release. It wasn't me. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to find out who that is because I haven't gotten to the bottom of that one yet. We weren't in it's a daily publication, local publication, The Courier. Um, I did get a copy of the Perth and North Perth, not Perth and North Perthshire, that's, that's the constituency <laughs> for, oh I thought, yeah we're kind of running out of time now. That's political constituency, Perth and Perthshire edition, so we weren't in that, um, so maybe, maybe today's or maybe we've not been used, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, time's quickly running out, so I will sign off here. Happy knitting, happy spinning, happy crocheting, happy whatever it is you do. Take care of yourselves, take care of one another and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye bye.